Okay, let's get started. Dear Lord, thank you. Placing this cross all of sins of yesterday. Sorry about those. Oh, dear Lord. Going to the devotion, give us something that will last us throughout the day. And this is in your name. Amen. Okay, Tuesday, May 26, recognizing Jesus. Then Jesus said to Thomas, reach your finger here, and look at my hands, and reach your hand here, and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. John 20, 27. More than one person was raised to new life in the Bible, but not permanent new life. The earthly bodies were re reanimated. They were resurrected. And they were probably immediately recognized by people who had known them before their death. It was not the case. This was not the case of Jesus and his resurrection body. After his resurrection, the two disciples Jesus joined on the humanist road didn't recognize him. His resurrection body must have looked human to the two travelers, but somehow different. Also, after his resurrection, Jesus appeared in a locked room where the disciples were gathered. In other words, he materialized in the room rather than opening the locked door. But there was one thing about his resurrection body that was the same. Wounds in his hands, feet, and side. Those wounds will eternally mark him as the lamb who was slain for us. Worship Jesus today as the lamb slain for your eternal redemption and prepare to recognize him by his wounds. The divine shone more out of his wounds than out of his life. Robert Murrow was shining. Community is about managing conflict. By Brent Lashma, Tuesday. May 26, 2020. Scripture reading, Matthew 18, 15 to 20. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. Matthew 18, 15. Alan's dog had a habit of barking. But your family was away. Of course, they didn't know it because they weren't there. They found out when the police showed up at their door saying that a neighbor had complained. Alan was shocked and a bit hurt. He was sorry that his dog was causing an annoyance in the neighborhood. But he was also upset that his neighbor hadn't just talked to him directly instead of calling the police. He went to talk to his neighbor and explain why he would have appreciated the direct contact and that he was sorry for the noise his dog was making. And his neighbor understood, even appreciated the conversation. Our text from Matthew 19 has been a fundamental principle for dealing with conflict. If you have a problem with someone, go and talk to them about it first before including other people. This seems pretty basic, but it is also a fundamental principle in community. Making a public complaint or using gossip or backstabbing would bring about mistrust and break community. On the other hand, directly addressing issues in the spirit of God's wisdom and love is a positive way of dealing with conflict. Conflict will arise. Managing them directly and in a timely way is an important part of community. 
Is there anyone with whom you need to discuss a conflict? Dealing with that has the potential to make your community even stronger. Father, help us deal with conflicts wisely and bring us into stronger relationships as a result. Amen. May 26, sowing seed. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Once when Roseland Roforth grew discouraged with her missionary work in China, she wrote the words of 2 Corinthians 9 6 on the blackboard in her home and looked at them daily. This promise remained constantly before me, she later said, an ever-present incentive to sow bountifully the gospel seed, even though it often seemed the seed was being cast on stony ground. The day came, however, when my beloved husband and I were permitted to see bountiful harvest of souls reap for our masters in that region. Indeed, the crowds who came to hear Jonathan go forth preach, sometimes number 25,000, a multitude unheard of in China's, in Chinese evangelism. Multitudes came to Christ during their career, and 50 Chinese converts became ministers or evangelists. We have a large assortment of seed to sow. Our gospel witness, gospel literature, our testimonies, our tithes and offerings, our acts of kindness and charity. The Bible promises that those who sow faithfully will reap a harvest. We can only reap if we sow. See what gospel seed can you sow today? May 26, in the presence of royalty. The Lord is at hand, Philippians 4, 5. When Queen Elizabeth II visited a children's charity in London recently, she met nine-year-old Nathan Grant and his adopted parents. He was dressed for the occasion in a suit and tie with cameras running. The boy was starstruck and overwhelmed. He suddenly fell to all fours, crawled away from the queen, and exited this with a nervous bye. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed by the presence and glory and demands of, of a holy God, and we're tempted to crawl away and exit through the door. But in Jesus Christ, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And when we behold his glory, we are filled with grace and truth. Try to develop the habit of practicing the presence of the Lord Jesus by his spirit. He is with you constantly, and the Holy Spirit even dwells within you. Christ is a sanctifying influence in our life as we realize who he is, and what he has called us to be. Learn to frequently whisper to yourself, Christ is with me, around me, inside me. Learn to be comforted by his royal presence. Matthew 1, a record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, Judah the father of Perez and Sarah, whose mother was Tamar, Perez the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Amadad, Amadad, the father of Nesan, Nesan, the father of Solomon, 
Solomon, the father of Boaz, whose mother's name was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse. And Jesse, the father of David. David was the father of Solomon. His mother had been Nero's wife. Solomon, the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Aja. Aja, the father of Asha. Asha, the father of Jezebat. Jezebat, the father of Jeron. Jeron, the father of Usa. Usa, the father of Jothan. Jothan, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh. Manasseh, the father of Amon. Amon, the father of Jesha. And Jesha, the father of Jesha and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. After the exile to Babylon, Jeshara was the father of Shitio. Shitio, the father of Zibada. Zibada, the father of Abad. Abad, the father of Hika. Hika, the father of Azar. Azar, the father of Zadok. Zadok, the father of Achan. Achan, the father of Elad. Elad, the father of Isra. Isra, the father of Matham. Matham the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. Thus, there were 14 generations in all from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile of Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from all sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophets. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to his son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife, but he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave his name Jesus. In love and memory of Dorothy E. Taylor, July 11, 1926 to July 6, 2014. God saw you getting tired, and the cure was not to be. So he put his arms around you and whispered, Come to me. With tearful eyes, we watched you and saw you pass away. Though we loved you dearly, we could not make you stay. The golden heart stopped beating, hard working hands at rest. God broke our hearts to food to us. He only takes the best. Oh, dear Lord, thank you. Thank you for the devotions. Explaining the chronologically, genealogically deal with Jesus. Lord, once again, 
Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you are. And thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, be with us now as we go through your day. Pour out your wisdom on my family. The kids I went to school with. My friends I have on Facebook that I never met. And of course, drown me in it. And I'm the worst of the worst. Thank you again. Amen.